Howdy folks, John here from rchelicopterfun.com. Today we're gonna to be addressing a flat backup battery on this Horus X12S radio. If you're thinking of getting an FR Sky Horus or you've already got one, I'm gonna show you how to open it up, how to access the backup battery inside, how to identify it, how to test it, and of course, how to replace it. Now, how do you know if your backup battery is dead? Well, it's pretty simple. When you go to turn on your radio, let's just zoom in here. You turn me on. Normal mode, throttle release, low rates, rudder low, acro mode. If you look in the top right hand corner of your display where the date and time are, uh, they will be reset to January 1st and roughly 0 hundred hours. Situation normal, all f***ed up. Couldn't have said it better myself. The backup battery has nothing to do with your actual model programming. So all your models and programming and everything are stored in the micro SD card. Uh, the only thing the backup battery does to keeps the date and time when you power the radio off. Let's uh, open this bad boy up. Whenever I open up my radio, I like having a soft surface to do it on. This is an Align assembly towel. So, you know, any, any towel would work. Just something so it doesn't get scratched. That's up to you, of course. Um, if you've got an external module in here, you're going to want to take that out. And to get these open, you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. And another little tip I do when I open my Horus up is the external antenna port on here. I like taking that out right now. It uses an 8 millimeter nut on it. So we'll just get that out. And I'll show you why we do that off the bat. in a moment. So there's six screws on the back to access. Now obviously battery replacement for the uh, X10 or X10S will be similar of course. Opening it up is going to be different and the location will obviously be different but the same principles would apply probably even the jumper T16 and the T16 Pro. So there's six screws, two in the top, two kind of in the middle here, oops, and two at the bottom right here. So we'll just fast forward through these guys. Now with those all loose, hopefully they'll just pop out the back. Make sure they're all accounted for. Oh, there's all the six, so we'll just get those out of the way. Now to open this up, I just usually get my fingers on the side of the silicone grab pads here and kind of push back. Now on the inside, there's a few connectors we have to take, a, take off. So your two uh, rotary dials on the back, you're gonna have to unplug those. Now it'd be best if you had some pliers or something to get in there, but I'm working at a bad angle. So just unplug those real quick. And then your vibration motor is down here, this plug here. Unplug him. Now the GPS antenna lead is here. Oh, and that antenna, that one that we had unscrewed, there it is right there. And the reason I do that is because when we open this up, we're gonna have to flip this around. Again, there's the GPS antenna lead. And I just like push it, pull, putting the radio down like this and then flipping the backside around like that. So we don't have any strain on the antenna. And as you can see, there's the external antenna lead. Uh, and by taking it out, we didn't have to unplug the UFL connector right here. And UFL connectors have a finite cycle life. So if at all possible, you don't wanna be pulling them on and off too many times. So that way we don't even have to uh, pull that out. I'm just gonna zoom in here. So we wanna take out our main power pack. I'll just unplug it from the power board and we're going to want to take these two connectors off the power board so here's the uh, charge jack plug it's from your charge jack and here's the power output going to the main logic board so we want to take that off and now we have to take this whole assembly out so there's a screw down here again a phillips there's one here, one over here, hopefully that's in frame, 
and then one down here. And then this whole assembly will come out. Now, oh, in like sin, ARM processor chip, nice big quad flak pack. Never been back here. It's really nice looking board. At any rate, there's our little backup battery. And to get them out, there's just this little sprung tab that you push back and it should pop out. And it is, if this thing focuses, a CR1220. So a three volt lithium 1220. Now to test it, if you've got a digital multimeter, we'll go into our DC volts and uh, just test the old battery here. 0.24. So yeah, it's dead. <laughs> Actually, comments below if anyone's got one of these things. Has your backup battery failed so quickly? This mine is three years old. I'm kind of surprised it uh, has crapped out so fast. Uh, what's the name brand on this thing? Probably some no name Chinesium garbage. So put a good one in. So we've got some Panasonic ones here. We'll just test the new ones. Make sure it is good. There, that's more like it, 3.3 volts. So we'll just uh, put him in. It goes in this way and then that little sprung tab keeps it in at the back. It's that simple. Now we've just got to put it back together in the reverse sequence and we will make, we'll reset the time and make sure it's uh, being stored when we turn the unit off. Quick little tip I thought I'd share, when you do take this tray out, yeah, take, get something to pull those screws out before you flip it over. I had one lodged underneath here and it took a little bit of time to get out. And when you refit the tray, this is the Bluetooth antenna lead, it can get pinched or so could this little wire. So just make sure those don't get pinched under that uh, screw post. So now that you've got that back together, uh, we got to plug our main power plugs back into the power board. So the charge plug and the plug going to the board. I'll fit our battery back in here, plug it in. And just make sure these wires here the main power out lead from the battery, it's not, you know, stuck over this one mounting post. Otherwise it'll get pinched when you put the back back on. So when you're fitting it back together, just uh, get your three plugs plugged in. So there's our little vibration motor plug and our two rotary dial knob plugs. Again, working at a bad angle if you need tweezers or something to help you out use them. Just make sure they're firmly in there. Make sure that GPS antenna is still plugged in if it got jostled at all. And the only, the only other thing then is that external antenna. And just fit him through that little hole in the back. Now just make sure everything looks good where before you slide it back together. Main battery power or the main battery is still in place. Again, watch those power cords that they're not going to be over top of that pin or that post. And then it should just nicely slide together all the way around. No air gaps or anything. Everything fits nicely together. But before putting all the, all the screws back in, let's power it up. You turn me on. Throttle warning. Normal mode. Throttle hold. Low rates. Rudder low. Acro mode. Make sure it still works. So you'll notice the date is still January 1st, but let's uh, let's reset this. So what do we got? I think we're sitting at 2020. 
It's today, February 20, when is it? 27th, I believe. Leap year this year, right? And let's just go down to time. Eight o'clock. So, February 27th, eight o'clock, we'll power it down. Oh, nasty. And we're gonna have to leave it for a couple of minutes. We'll come back and see if the uh, date and time are still correct. Well, it's been about 15 minutes or so. Went to grab a cup of coffee. Let's see how we're doing here with date and time. Mm, you turn me on. Normal mode. Throttle hold. How's low it kept? Spreader low. Acro mode. I'll zoom in. February 27th, 8.15. Working good. That's all there is to it. Pretty easy to change if your battery goes flat. Just be careful when you're putting it back together. None of the uh, wires get pinched. And by all means, if uh, you've got one of these things or even the Horus 10, let us know if you've had to change your backup battery. Like I said, mine only lasted three years. That seems pretty short. Was it just because they used the cheapest Chinesium stuff they could find to throw in there? Or do these have a fairly high parasitic drain to keep the time and clock running? If you're at all interested in the hobby of radio controlled helicopters, feel free to visit my website. I'll link to it below in the description or up in the corner here. That's about it. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.